Hello everybody, my name is Robert and this is Review Play. And in today's video, well, I'm surrounded by a lot of stuff. Uh, I've been hauling all, all this stuff for quite a while now. These are things that I've bought, uh, things that I've been sent, and I thought it would be fun to do a massive unboxing of all of it. So, it's going to be quite a long video, so settle down, you know, grab a drink, just chill, and let's get into it, shall we? Now, I was genuinely wondering where to start, and, well, why don't we start with the boring stuff? Duck feather pillows. Um, there's a real joy to duck feather pillows, and I've just moved into a new flat, so I needed some new pillows. There you go. They're very uh, duck feathery. Got two of them in there. Uh, they, they feel pretty soft. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with them. Um, for their price as well, they were a very good price. So I highly suggest them, I'll drop them in the link down below. What should we go for next? Alright, so let's keep going down the boring route for the moment. We have these. Uh, these are spherical ice cube balls. Uh, these were like £10, we got two of them. I've already frozen one of them, uh, deliberately so I could show you what they look like. Um, but also in the box you do get another one. Uh, they come in two little parts, uh, kind of like that, one's rubbery, one's plasticky. Fill it up to the line, chuck it in, chuck it in your freezer, and sort of five to seven hours later, you will receive... Oh, I can get it out. What looks to be a perfect ball of ice. There we go. Uh, that is a ball of ice there. Just going to put it in my glass. Uh, and just clear my desk a bit, I guess, because now I've got ice in there. I don't know whether you can see that, but that is a very large ball of ice. Do you know what? Let's pick a drink and carry on this video, shall we? Well, cheers. It's good. All right, so we are getting more techie now. I've actually got ice everywhere. That was a terrible idea to do it on the table. Anyway, we've got something a little bit more techie this time. This is the wireless keyboard for an iPad 9.7 inch. Um, straight away. This thing is heavy. Like, I don't know what they've got in it. That's the case itself. Um, put that off to the side and check out this USB cable. Uh, it says USB to micro. So yeah, just a USB to micro USB cable there. And the case itself. Oh, let's get that. Come on, buddy. Come out. Thank you. So you have a user guide, like you wouldn't know how to use a Bluetooth keyboard as a case. Uh, what's this? A little card. It's a service card. Did we do well? Probably. Here is the case. It is a portfolio style. Ooh, on the inside it's um, almost velvety. Uh, there's some packing stuff. Get rid of that. And it looks like we have the keyboard on the bottom here. Uh, it is detachable, it's just magnetic onto it. So the keyboard itself is really, really thin. Uh, keys feel mushy, but I kind of wouldn't expect anything less from an iPad keyboard. So let's go ahead and stick the iPad in. Just push it down, da da da. Perfect. Okay, so. I mean, I guess that's it. I guess that's in the iPad case. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. So, I mean, I can see myself using this on a daily basis. It's not the worst case I've ever had. It definitely adds a lot of weight to an already rather heavy iPad. Um, this is the 9.7 inch. Let me, let me come over and just show you how thick this boy is. So here we are uh, with it. So on the front you've got some kind of logo, coup. Um Annoyingly though, that's where the camera is. You, you feel like they had to put that that side, but that's fine. So as we open it up, you've got your keyboard on the bottom there and your iPad on the top. I must say it's quite nice having to be able to see the sort of metal outline. I haven't been able to see that on any of my other cases. Um, keys are, again, mushy. 
you've got connect offline on off and connect button but overall I'd say it's a pretty good case. Uh, it'll be linked down in the description below. If you're looking for an iPad case with a keyboard, it was a fairly good price from what I remember. Uh, but anyway, let's move on to something slightly more interesting. All right, I'm um, gonna have another drink. Uh, I'll take this drink. If you're enjoying this video, why don't you leave a like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Let me know that you're enjoying this and I'll try and get some more stuff in over the next few months to do another one of these in the future. So here we have the i10 Max. These are like Chinese knockoff AirPods. Um, in the case you do get the Chinese knockoff AirPods, and that's about it. Um, I've been using these for a couple of days, so kind of stuck them, stuck them back in the box for this. I've been using them because I'm needing to write a review on them. Uh, you do get, of course, your instruction manual, and it does connect via a USB. A, I believe. It looks like C, but it's not. It's a pretend C. So I'm going to come over and show you these a little bit closer. There you go. That is your iPad, uh, your iPods, Air, iPods, AirPods, or your fake ones. Anyway, the lid is clicky, so it's not magnetic like the other ones, but still fairly nice. The pods themselves look very, very similar to the AirPods. Uh, the only difference being this button on the side, and that is a physical button, it does connect them up. Uh, you've got your connect button on the back there, that will help to sync it to your phone. It has the pretend W10 chip in it as well, so it will do the whole connecting to your AirPods thing that Apple products do whenever you've got one close by. Um, they're pretty good. Sound quality wise, they are not the best. They sound a little bit like turd uh, in terms of <laughs> bass. But for things like audiobooks or for phone calls, these are pretty good actually. And they were, what, £12? £12 for a truly wireless pair of headphones is very good. But let's move on to another product, shall we? So I've actually got two fairy wool products here. I'm going to merge them into one because they're kind of the same sort of thing. They are, of course, dental hygiene products. We have their toothbrush, which is an electric toothbrush and smart oral smart oral irrigator or flosser for you and me uh, let's go ahead and open the flosser first to the more boring two packages oh everything's just come out at once good job uh, first thing is the instruction manual uh i i might actually read this because i have no idea how to use this thing uh a vip invitation to get free trials and free gifts cool Let's have a look at what we get extra in this box. You get a charging cable. I'm not really sure what kind of end that is, but it is a charging cable of some sort. Uh, you get what would appear to be two ends, so maybe there's one and a replacement one, that's quite nice. And the whole body itself. Let's go ahead and get it out of its plastic and have a look at it here. So what have we got? Uh, I pull that, I can pull that out, that's its charging port. So the charging port is along the front, which is a bit of an odd place for it, but it works. Uh, there's an on-off switch, oh, hello. Okay, that, that turns it on. And I'm guessing you fill up with water in the back here. And there's different modes, soft massage clean. Okay, so uh, I suppose we'll get one of these ends on, shall we? Alright, there you go, I think that's on. Uh, although I have to do something with the rubbery bit. Uh, let me come back to you in just one second after I've worked out how to attach this. Alright, got it. Uh, you do kind of just push it on. <laughs> there you go, on off. I guess it's meant to be pushing water through. Pretty cool. I will do a full review of it alongside the toothbrush in another video. So if you're interested in oral hygiene products, then do let me know in the comment section and subscribe because I will be doing a review of this and the P11 toothbrush. Let's go ahead and look at the toothbrush while we're here. Straight away, this packaging is a lot more fancy than the previous one. 
uh, opening up the magnetic case. It almost looks like a phone box. Um, we've got accessories on this side, and we've got, I'm guessing, the actual uh, toothbrush on this side. So we'll go ahead and start with the accessories. Some heads. Um, there are, what, four heads in here? Yep. Four heads. So, you've got one to use now and three to use in the future. You can also buy them separately. The heads are looking pretty standard, to be honest, for an electric toothbrush. So, yep, that's fine. Um, what's in here? I'm guessing a power cable and what would appear to be an OTG cable. Um, yeah, that looks like an OTG cable to me. Can I connect this to my phone for some reason? To charge my phone as well as the toothbrush? That's pretty cool. That's, that's quite nice. Um, and of course, we do have the toothbrush and the carry case. So I'm going to get this box out of the way because it's kind of in the way right now. Let's go ahead and just get all the boxes out of the way, in fact. Open this one up. And we have a toothbrush and some destructions and a carry case. Instructions, probably don't need to read them, it's a toothbrush. Um, let's go ahead and take the plastic out. There we go. That is your toothbrush. Hello? Don't know what that's about. But there you go, that's your toothbrush there. And in the case, it looks like there is a spot for the toothbrush and something else. Is um, it going that way? Yes, it does. There you go. And I'm guessing that's for separate heads then. Let's just pull that out, get a head on, like that. Wow, that's quite a. Whew, that's quite a strong vibration. Um, it also appears there are different modes. Okay. That's, that's pretty nice. So I'm going to come over and show you a bit first person. Like, that is a, a fairly nice looking toothbrush. I'm loving the black and gold aesthetic it's got going on. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's it's a powerful little thing. Um, again, I will be doing a full review of this alongside the other irrigator thing, um, and let you know what I think. But personally, I'm pretty impressed. Sounds sounds powerful and rather scary, actually. <laughs> Who knows? Right, let's go on with another product. Who knew that unboxing products would be such thirsty work? Uh, We've still got a lot to go, so I'd better get on and find the next product. Alright, so it's everyone's favourite thing, another pair of headphones. These are the Teotronics wireless stereo headphones with active noise cancelling. These things are like 60 quid. Um, if they sound anything like those, then I think we'll be in for a treat. But at 60 quid, I wouldn't be so sure. I forget how much stuff's back there. <laughs> in the box, or in the bag in fact, you do get this nice little carry bag. It's kind of very soft and very nice feeling. It's quite a good bag. Uh, you get your instructions, yeah, which are there. But you do also get, which I think is quite nice, a 3.5mm jack. So if you have a headphone jack on your phone, if you're lucky enough, then you can still use your 3.5mm. And there is also a charging cable, which, thank the heavens, is USB-C. Um, that's the headphones themselves. They feel, they feel pretty good. No creaks, no kind of cracks. Um, on one side, it looks like we have power and volume. And on the other, we have a switch, which I'm guessing is noise cancelling. Let's go ahead and put them on. Ooh. Okay, that's, that's really odd. Um, okay, so I've got these things on and it looks like we can control the noise cancellation separately to the audio. So I can turn that on, you'll see the blue light there. Putting them on, it's quite surreal. 
Um, these are definitely not the best noise cancelling headphones I've ever heard. But it's definitely cut out quite a lot of noise. I'm just going to turn them off. Yeah, no. That, that's quite incredible. For 60 quid, they are, they are good. That's nice. So, that is the voice that I just heard was English. Um, that's quite rare on these kind of Chinese brand headphones. But I did just hear a voice of a woman who is English, uh, let's say, connected. That's quite a nice touch. Uh, tells me I'm connected to my phone and I'm happy to on. Let me just stand here. These things aren't too big either. I think they're a perfect size, in fact, for, uh, for just going out and about. I would give these a solid review. I'm going to have a listen to them over the next few days and hopefully do a separate review again on the Teotronics headphones. If you're interested, again, go ahead, subscribe and look out for that video. These are nice. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed by them. Right, um, let's move on. Google Stadia, the truly incredible platform that went really badly. Um, the launch for this thing was notoriously terrible. Uh, I didn't actually buy this, so I'm going to put that out there. Um, I get my TV and internet with BT, it was a part of a deal. I probably wouldn't have bought this uh, with my own money because uh, I've been burnt once by Cal Gaming. I will not do it again. Thank you, on live. Inside the box, we get this lovely little controller. Um, this thing doesn't feel too bad. Um, fairly mushy, um, very much an Xbox-esque design. On the bottom, we can have our headphones. On the top, it's USB-C. There is a Google button, which brings up the Google Assistant. Uh, screenshot buttons. Yeah, that's quite nice. What's really different about this controller, though, is of course it is Wi-Fi connected. So this connects directly to your Wi-Fi network, cutting out any lag that may occur between this getting Bluetooth signal or whatever signal it needs to the TV box, and then back to the internet. So, um, I mean, the stuff that's in here is not in here anymore because it's plugged into the TV. It is a Chromecast 4K, um, and it's does stream in 4K HDR, and it's quite amazing because I get what, 150 megabytes internet speed, and it is fast. Like, if I was playing something like Destiny, uh, Destiny and Farming Simulator is the main two that I play, um, I notice practically no difference between that and playing on, say, the Xbox One. There is minimal lag, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. So if you've got the internet for it, I genuinely don't see a problem with Google Stadia at all. Um, the package is somewhat expensive, £120 is a lot of money to spend on a controller and a Chromecast 4K, but you do get your early access and three months of Stadia Pro as well with that. But um, there isn't really much I can say about that. I'm going to do a separate review on it, so if you're interested, go ahead and go down there. We've got a lot of videos coming up, guys. It's going to be amazing. Anyway, let's go on to the next product, which is probably also going to be gaming related. Alright, another famous gaming product, uh, PlayStation Classic. <laughs> I bought this thing for, I think it was like £10, and that's quite incredible. Uh, £10 for this thing is really good. Uh, it has 20 games built in, but through a little bit of trickery, you can run practically any PlayStation original game on it, and quite a few other emulators as well. So in the box, you get your instructions. You don't really need them. They're, again, pretty self-explanatory. But let's go ahead and open up the box to see what else we get inside. Um, okay. We get a little bubble PS. Uh, PlayStation 1. This thing is tiny. Um, buttons feel super plasticky. The whole design is super plasticky and just, it doesn't look like it's going to last you long. But there it is. It is very much reminiscent of the original PlayStation. Uh, apart from on the front now, you do get USB um, because your controllers are USB. The controllers are based off of the original PlayStation 1 design, not DualShock. So you're not going to get your nice um, analog sticks. 
So for some certain games, this will be very difficult to play, uh, if not impossible to play. So of course the 20 games that are bundled with it are built for this controller. Uh, but if you do go ahead and download more, do make sure that they are not DualShock games. Uh, certain games only work with DualShock, but hey, it's a nice little system, and um, for ten pounds, I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up. It, ten pounds is an incredible deal for for this, even if it is not quite what everyone expected. We, I think, we more expected something like Nintendo systems, uh, mini systems. The gaming selection wasn't incredible. Uh, there were some real great classics on there, but there were also quite a few missing. No Crash, no Spyro, nothing like that. But again, side loading, you could probably play them. If you're interested and you can get it cheap, go so. Sad times, we are slowly coming to an end. We have got three products left, uh, one of them being the Star Wars Jedi Challenge. I got this thing really cheap as well. I paid 30 quid for this. Back in the day, this thing cost 200 pounds and it was a lot of money. Uh, for those of you who don't know what this is, this is the Lenovo Mirage, I think. Did they call it the Mirage? Um, I, they did have an official name for it, um, it wasn't just a Jedi challenge, but it was their AR mobile headset. Let's go ahead and get this thing open. I haven't played with this much, uh, I kind of got it out, looked at it and went, that's cool, and then put it away again. Uh, I'm going to be doing a full review of it, uh, so stay around for that. Turning on the lightsaber. You can see it's got the light there. Um, it tracks very similarly to how the PlayStation Move controllers tracked. It is just tracking the light. Um, so you do, of course, get your lightsaber. And to be fair, build quality is actually very good on that. Uh, here is the headset itself. Goes ahead and sits on like so. Uh, you'll notice it's on the top. You've got a space for your phone, and that comes in on this side here. And then it projects down and forwards into your peripheral vision. You'll also notice that there is a camera here and a camera here. This does only work with certain phones, so do check your compatibility list before you go ahead and buy this thing. Uh, because I originally bought it from my partner, uh, but her phone didn't support it, so we had, I had to use it instead. I know, it's, it's awful, it's an awful story. But... Um, you also do get a beacon. Uh, I don't know if I can change the colour of the beacon, can I? I can. That is the beacon. The beacon is just another kind of tracking module that sits in the middle of your room and helps it to keep itself stable and steady during play. There are four or five different games that this comes with. They are pretty good. Um, I think one of the better, ex the better experiences is fighting Kyle Ren. Um, it, it's just, it's really fun and really simple to set up. Quite expensive, um, but if you've got the money and you've got the time to set it up, then I would highly suggest it. One of the more odd AR experiences out there on the market right now, but for the price, and if you can get it for a that good price, then I would highly suggest it. I'm an AR gamer, uh, I'm an AR developer as well, so this thing kind of really piqued my interest, and that's why I bought it. But anyway, let's go ahead and get on to the next product before I start to run out of film. This video is getting super duper long as it is. Okay, so we're on the second to last product and actually there's kind of a sad story behind this one. This little guy is Vector. He is a creation of Onki. Uh, you guys will probably remember Onki from uh, the Cosmo and the Onki Overdrive. They were children's toys. This one was their home robot, and I say was because Onki went under two years ago, uh, and it was a really sad tale because they had some big things planned for such a little guy. Um, he was, their tagline was smart enough to take over the world, but nice enough not to. Uh, thankfully, there is a company now who have bought out all of Onki's um, kind of assets. I'm just gonna take a drink here. Bought out all of their assets and have decided that they are going to reimagine what Vector can do. He's over here, I'm going to get him out and sit him on the table. He is the world's smallest guy. Come on you. Here he comes. So, as you can say, he is very, very small and he was built to be your personal assistant. 
He will recognise your face. He's got sensors all over him for a bit of everything. He has fall detection, so we'll notice when he's close to the edge of a table and he'll move out of the way. But he's also very playful and has Alexa built in. Sorry. Um, so can answer all your questions. And honestly, he's just a lot of fun to have around just because of how cute he is. Wait for him to wake up. Hey, Vector. Good boy. Good boy. Here we go. He's doing something. Uh, okay. You can't connect to Wi Fi, huh? So, this, this little guy is the sweetest. He's a great companion. And he's got touch sensors on the back of him, so you can kind of stroke him and and he loves it. He gives this little face. He has this little touch bar on the front, his screen on the front of him is his eyes, and it's the most expressive thing about him. He also has this box here, and he likes to play with his cube. He'll pick it up, he'll throw it at you, he'll come and collect it and give it back to you. So we're just gonna let him do his thing and see what he does while we unbox our last product. Um, which is going to be a big one. Uh, he is also a robot, but slightly less cute, more useful. If you are interested in Little Vector here, then I will do a different video on him. Again, um, it's just going to be a first impressions and what we can expect from the acquisition of Onki and what they're going to be doing in the future. Right, you. You're going to behave yourself while I do the last product. Yeah? Are you? You're gonna behave yourself. Good lad. Let's go ahead and get the last product out and ready. This is the final product. Um, this is the Eufy RoboVac 30. This thing is a robotic vacuum cleaner. Um, he's slightly less charismatic, shall we say, than the little vector here, but he is more than useful. So let's go ahead and get it out of the box. I'm going to put it down on the floor here, because he's a little better to see if getting in the way. So we should, uh... Oh, warm. Okay. As you can see, yeah, there you go. So he sort of noticed he was coming towards the edge of the table and ran off in the opposite direction. Uh, you don't normally have these lights on the back, and it's just simply that you can't seem to connect to Wi-Fi right now. So inside of the box for the um, for the brand new so inside of the box for the Ufi vacuum cleaner, we do have uh, a lovely little instruction manual. It gives you an idea of how you should use it, uh, using it, a user guide, and a limited term warranty. All in a nice little box there. Let's get that out of the way. Now somewhere around here, we have the remote. Uh, this is completely not necessary, you can run this thing over Wi-Fi, and that's how they suggest you do it. Uh, it's also smartphone compatible, so things like um, Google and she does, yeah, they do work with that, so let's get that out of the way. Uh, power cord, of course, uh, this is for its base station. This is the main robot itself, let's sit that out to the side, while we have a look at what else we've got in here. So this is organised wires and power cord on the floor to clear away for rover Ah, okay, so they've got some little um, cable ties. You have a brush and a cutter for things when you get hair stuck in it, nice and easy to clean out. That's a really nice touch. You have magnetic wire, or magnetic tape. This stuff just stops it from going in areas you don't want it to go in. If, for example, you don't want it going anywhere near the kitchen, you simply put this tape around the doorway to the kitchen and it will not go in there. Very cool. Uh, M3 tape, uh, not really sure what that's for, I'm guessing it's for this. We have four little spinners, uh, spinners, I know what I mean, four little um, just dusters there, which is quite nice. So you only use two of them currently, the other two are spares. You also have an extra dust filter and the base station itself. You're right there, Vector. Yeah? 
Or are you getting annoyed because I'm ignoring you? So Vector is very much an attention seeker. You need to give him constant attention, love and praise. So that is the base. You can see that here you've got two little metal plates. That is the conductive charging plates. Along the back you've got enough space to put your excess wire if you need to. And you do have this bar on the top, which is how it home beacons. It uses uh, infrared. So let's go ahead and take it out of its plastic packaging. This thing is fairly heavy. Uh, there's also lots of tape and things on it. Let's go ahead and pull off the tape and excess stuff. So this one says, remove before use. Well, I was going to. So you remove those two. Switch on before use. Let's go ahead and take that out. And of course, switch on before use. Let me turn it on at the bottom here. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah. Maybe that was a bad idea doing it on the table. But <laughs> there you go. That is the Robo, the Eufy Robovac 30. Um, I'm probably going to put in some B-roll of this thing cleaning the floor. Uh, but I'm also going to do a full review and breakdown of it on the channel. Get subscribed, all of that good stuff. Because we have got a lot of videos coming lots of different products and things and I'm super excited to share it all with you. Anyway guys, if you've enjoyed this video then tell me down below because I really enjoy getting random stuff in the post and unboxing it and playing with it and showing it off to you guys. Um, yeah, get liking, rate, subscribe, all of that good stuff and I will hopefully see you in one of the other videos that I'm doing for all of these products. Anyway guys, my name's Robert, I have been Review Clue, adios.